I'm trying to push globetrotting towards 40,000 subscribers, so if you haven't already subscribed, it will certainly mean a lot. The Boeing 767X has had many iterations throughout the years. It's been primarily known as an inverted Boeing 747 that would have indeed turned a few heads if that design progressed. Still, most recently, and especially before the pandemic, talk of a 767X more centred around it being a general re-engine of the existing 767 model, with other improvements seen too to make it a new attractive option to customers looking for a plane between the 737 and the 787. While the 787, yes, has in some regard acted as a replacement to the 767, there'll always be some that will call for a more direct replacement. Boeing's gap between aircraft programs is quite substantial, and considering I've only mentioned the 767 and not even the 757, it does really highlight that gap. So what is the 767X? What is the premise and why did Boeing ultimately not move forward with such a plane? Dating back to the late 2010s, there were discussions regarding a re-engined 767, essentially dubbed the 767X, following a similar naming pattern to the 777X and likely steering clear of the MAX naming, which at the time, and I think still to this day, has somewhat rather negative connotations surrounding it. It is definitely why Boeing has moved towards naming the aircraft very much just the 7378, 7379 and part of the MAX family. The report from Flight Global, though, which will be found below in the description, highlights that the study exists under the project name 767-XF. Yes, the F stands for Freighter. And that's because that's what it was centric to as well. The freighter sector also brings many possible opportunities. Often aircraft manufacturers will study projects, but it doesn't necessarily mean they will produce them. We've seen this repeatedly, and it's been covered pretty extensively here on numerous occasions on the channel, with endless creations that were never eventually produced for a host of pretty valid reasons. But re-engining an aircraft, if the engine manufacturer commits to it, can be a very cheap way to get additional life out of a design, boost efficiency and also please your customers. Boeing has done something very similar with its 737 series. Things have changed a lot from the first iteration to the latest Max, but at its very core, the 737 has primarily stayed the same. It's getting as much life as possible out of these planes and by whatever means it is the utmost priority. Why green light a multi-billion dollar clean sheet plane if there is a cheaper alternative that could be equally successful for the plane maker? Studying the GENX engines specifically for the freighter and also potential passenger needs, such a re-engine, if it had proceeded, could have boosted efficiency on the existing platform and been a short-term answer to carriers' desires in the middle of the market sector. For freighter operations, it also could have substantially aided further interest in a 767F, which it must be mentioned, still in 2023, is a very successful freighter in the Boeing program. But this would have given it a competitive edge over other options and potentially continued Boeing's stronghold in that freight market. The airframe would not have had any significant structural changes, which is essential to note, as what it does mean is Boeing, if they had proceeded with the study, it would have been very easy for them to integrate this into their production and also portfolio. Of course, what is also very important for me to highlight during this analysis is while at the time the study had been identified by Flight Global, Boeing was going through their 737 MAX crisis but not the effects of the pandemic. And yes, I'm referring to supply chain discomfort that hadn't hit yet and had not impacted every single program. And yes, at the same time, the 777X was beginning to see some delays, but certainly not on the scale that would unfold in those coming years. So it really highlights that it was at a time that was very different for Boeing. Sure, it was not the most practical period with the max problems ongoing, but it was about to get a whole lot worse for the industry. If such a 767X had actually come about, well, it could have entered service halfway through the 2020s and potentially filled a market that at the time, the A321 XLR was certainly running away with after a very, very strong launch at that year's air show. 
I highlighted earlier the cheapness of building a 767X and offering it to customers to bridge the gap between the Max and the 787. No, a 767X wouldn't look like, say, a 1000 plus seller plane, but rather a bridge and also a compromise. In contrast, the plane maker would work on its next generation airliner, say still for the 2030s, that would harbour new technology and be a proven upgrade, but all the while the short term fix of a 767X would please customers after such a plane, and it could be a really decisive difference between them heading to Boeing's European rival Airbus and the extensive A321 program that has enjoyed quite a lot of success, for the most part at Boeing's expense, which as you would know didn't proceed with the variant I'm discussing and have therefore left a significant hole in their portfolio. That's not to say that the A321 family still wouldn't be the favourite. In fact, it probably still would, but it does stop as many customers heading over in that direction. You may be asking why I'm saying that is such a big factor. Well, once Airbus has these customers in their hands and can build up a relationship with them, by the time the next generation of aircraft comes around from Boeing and also Airbus, they will be Airbus customers in that area. They therefore may be more inclined to get a pretty sweet deal from a customer that at this point they would have been interacting with for over more than a decade. After the pandemic though, Boeing executives reveal that they wouldn't be progressing with a new aircraft in the market until the 2030s as I briefly touched on. And a 767X in 2023, well, there's been no development news or really any firm discussion surrounding the topic since that flight global finding in 2019. It seems doubtful Boeing would just pop up and progress with such a plane. For many, it does make sense. Fundamental aviation analysis have also repeated time and time again that whether it's a 757X or 767X, there are opportunities with the airframe to extend the life of a very popular series until a firm replacement is organised. Yes, there would be costs associated with doing so, time and resources, but it would also ultimately see them at least put up a fight against other manufacturers' options. Finally, Boeing will just wait. And we won't see a new plane until the 2030s, which is shocking to say because the likelihood that this publication is still around is probably unlikely. So I don't think I'll be around to see that new plane in the capacity at least of documenting it for you. And people will have very strong opinions about that. Still, internally, no decision is easy for the company, especially not for one in the aviation industry. And no doubt these studies do exist for a reason. So if they don't proceed with them, there's definitely a valid concern there. But given this is a community, and we're all enthusiasts, whatever stage of learning and understanding you're at, where do you stand on the 767X? Whether you knew about it before, or are just learning about it now, do you believe it would have been a good bridge and also alternative for the period we're in? Or are Boeing just better off waiting and their next plane really being a hit? Remember though, technology does still need to prove itself, so Boeing is relying on that technology being ready by the time they want to release a new plane. If the technology is not proven and not ready, serious questions will be asked. Thanks a lot for watching, take care and be safe, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you next time. And we'll fly.